expressed by J. Michael McCoy are the views of the hosts and guests of Max World Live and not necessarily the views of Webcast One Live, its staff, its management, the cleaning crew, Dave the electric guy, the guy who cleans the skywalk, the woman who brought in the cookies, the management staff of Hubble Real Estate, the parking lot attendant at Keck Parking, the wait staff over at Miss Kitty's, the coffee crew at Frederick's, the man in the street corner willing to work for food, Rob Spearman, Max Crab, or anyone else of sound mind. Should you be offended, provoked, intimidated, shocked, confused, or just made to think independently, log on to MaxWorldLive.com right now. It's your voice we want to hear in Max World. And now, live from the palatial studios of Webcast One Live, your host, Jay Michael McCoy. Four minutes after the hour here of 2 o'clock on the 14th day of July in the Lord's year 2015, I am Jay Michael McCoy, and this is Max World on a Tuesday with my co-host Tom Coates in the house. Ryan is producing, and Frank the Verse is, well, he's pulling double duty today. So he's running the soundboard. So all of a sudden, and then you don't hear my, it's probably because he's messing up. He might pop in every once in a while to make a comment. Is that okay with you? Oh, that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm glad to see Frank understudying Ryan back there. Yeah, um, he's, uh, he's, Frank, uh, is he called you grasshopper more than once today? <laughs> All right, so uh, we're thankful to have those boys in the house. Um, Shane Vanderhart from Caffeinated Thoughts is on the phone with us. Shane, how are you this morning or this hey, afternoon? Pr- pretty good. Uh, I want to start out. Let's just start out what everybody's talking about, uh, this treaty. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, um, pa- unpack it for us. What, is it, what does it mean? What is it in real English, Shane? <laughs> well, uh, I can't say I've been able to, to look at it in depth, but... Basically, it seems like they, we are trusting that the uh, Iranians are going to do what you know we we'd like them to do. That they're going to stop enriching uh, and uranium. That we're going to uh, take away their centrifuges. That um, basically uh, they're going to block the enriched uranium. Um, they're going to take away any weapons grade plutonium. Uh, there's a particular reactor. That uh, has that partic- that can have that ability that they're supposed to re outfit uh, in order to prevent that from happening. And we're going to rely totally on the, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of the name of the organization. Honesty? Uh, the, no. the, 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 well, <laughs> the, uh, oh, the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency, uh, that's, that's, I believe, a branch of the UN, to monitor all of this because they've done such a bang up job in the past. So, um, I, basically, the, the agreement is we're going to relax sanctions uh, while you go through this process. We're going to monitor. We can reinstate sanctions, both U.N. as well as European Union and U.S. sanctions, should you violate any aspect of this agreement. Um, however, by relaxing the sanctions, we're allowing them to build up money, um, which... In turn, they could build conventional arms. They're not. They could. They could throw them to, to uh, you know, uh, sponsoring terrorism. There's all sorts of different things they could do with this. Uh, the, the Obama administration should have took a step back and said, "Hey, no deal until you first of all recognize Israel's right to exist and our right to exist. That you swear off terrorism. That we can see tangible evidence that you are no longer a sponsor of terror." Then maybe we can move forward with this, but um, I'm, I'm afraid that you know maybe it may possibly delay an Iranian nuke. But I think in the meantime, it, that's going to be a short-term gain. What we're going to allow them to do is just build up you know resources that they need that they've been uh, blocked from as a result of sanctions in the past. Shane Vanderhart is my guest. He is uh, the blog manager. He is the uh, blogister. He is the most bloggist for caffeinatedthoughts.com. He also does a radio program uh, here on 99.3 every Saturday. Starts out your day at 8 o'clock, ends up your day at 6 o'clock. It's a repeat at uh, 6 o'clock in the evening. Um, The disappointment level, Well, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, Mac, you and I were talking before the show started. I mean, you think about the 
chicanery, the, the traitorous behavior, the duplicity of this guy and his administration. You think you've gone as far as you can possibly go, and then he takes a step even further into the darkness. Uh, mm -hmm. Shane, I don't blame you for not having a chance to go through some of this. I've been trying to catch a few points here before I came on the air. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a relax and there to be a total lifting of the sanctions as soon as mm -hmm. the U.N. approves it. Um, the inspections on the site, they initially Barack Obama said a number of items had to be in this agreement. He assured Congress before uh, this administration would allow it to happen. And point by point, every time the Iranians have said no, uh, mm -hmm. he's backed up, said, oh, OK, um, the inspections on those sites with the, uh, <laughs> the the ones you're talking about will only mm -hmm. be they can't be spot they can't be done uh, they have to make a request and then it oh, goes be through before an arbitration committee that Iran sits on and so in that interim if there is something that they don't want the inspectors to see, you'll have plenty of time to remove it um, right that, that's even worse than yeah, I, yeah no it's it's far worse I think than any of us have uh, even imagined the arms embargo that uh, you know they were cheating on all along Shane you know that uh, right. that they were getting arms to Hezbollah and and their insurgents that are that are with them over there um, uh, Russia who sells the arms to Iran has also wanted that arms embargo lifted. Well, now, guess what? That, that arms embargo is going to be lifted. As recently as the uh, day before yesterday, Kerry said, oh, no, that's, that's not going to be lifted. And, of course, now that's in the agreement, the arms embargo, so they can supply their terrorist minions throughout the, the Mideast. Uh, that, that can be done to some degree now above board. Um, it, it's, it's a, I, you can't help but think, guys, that... This guy has come in. He has Obama. Yes, Obama, uh, the anointed one. Uh, he has come in, despite his uh, official protestations. He has been anti-Christian. I don't think there's any doubt he's anti-Jew. He's anti-Israel. Uh, he is turned his back. We've had some friendly alliances over there, at least some working alliances with Egypt. Uh, I, you know, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Libya was at least a, a you know a, a person that we could deal with. Those have been turned around. Uh, he 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 just spurned those previous relationships. Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, that is very fearful uh, of a nuclear armed Iran, now was going to have to do double duty to try to get up and become a nuclear power. We're going to have this thing moving quickly, and it's just a matter of time before a nuclear bomb goes off. I Israel. Netanyahu has said this is a horrible, horrible deal. He's been saying it for quite a while. He's saying we're reserving the right to defend ourselves, and we assume we'll have to do it alone. And so uh, it, it's acknowledged for a long time they've had the bomb, and I think if they feel like it is imminent that Iran gets it and uses it against them, when they, which they've already avowed that they will, they want the nothing but the annihilation of the nation of Israel, which is our outpost in a very dangerous area, they're going to deliver it, and that's the start of likely World War III and a nuclear, uh, you know, holocaust. Holocaust in the Middle East, uh, and I guess we could argue that the Bible uh, declares that this is where it's going to happen. I mean, I'm not one to get into the end times uh, talk, but uh, a nuclear um, battle in the Middle East would would probably uh, go along with a lot of way people have been talking for decades about what the end times will look like, right? Scorched Earth. Mm -hmm. Tom Coates is my guest along with Shane Vanderhart. Shane, can you kind of carry that mantle for a little bit farther, what it does say in Revelation? Oh, gosh. Uh, is that beyond your pay grade? <laughs> well, you know, I, I kind of always take the position with, uh, I've always used to say I'm, I'm a pan trib person when it comes to Revelation. I'll pan out in the end. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, as far as... Uh, um, it, it, just leave it to yeah. say that Tom said it correctly, that it is going to be a nuclear holocaust that's well, going to be in the Middle East, and the big gonna, bear and the sickle and all of the eagle, it's all going to be there. Well, I, I'd say, you know, there's a lot of uh, figurative language in Revelation, so I, it's hard for us to say exactly. Uh, anybody that paints a full picture of, oh, this is going to be exactly what, you know, Revelation is going to be, look, you know, going to look like, I wouldn't go that far. I think that's going out on a limb to say. Um However, we do know there's going to be war, there's going to be pestilence, there's going to be famine, it's going to be bad. There will be a great tribulation 
Um, how, you know, the details of all that, I don't know. It will definitely involve the Middle East. Whether it involves a nuclear holocaust, I can't say. Yeah. All right. Um, what, Shane, what advantage do we as Americans or the country of America gain through this treaty or whatever you want to call it with Iran? What, what, what do we get out of it? Oh, well, you know, I, I, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't see what p- potential gain we can, we can have from this. I, the only thing I can see, President Obama thinks, so oh, maybe Iran will start liking us again, and maybe we'll, you know, uh, get along, and maybe they won't sponsor terror. I, 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 honestly, I don't know what's going through the man's head. What, what do we do the first time that, for whatever reason, we have placed in our hands a weapon currently being used by ISIS, and we find that it has been an arm, arms sold by Russia or China to Iran after this treaty went in place? Well, that's certainly that's going to put us in a very tight, you know, form, uh, diplomatic spot as far as how to handle that, you know, because uh, China and Russia are two superpowers that, you know, we <laughs> we have to handle with care because it's not like we could just willy nilly go in there with our military to to, to you know remedy the situation. Um, I you know that that that's a nightmare scenario if if they get the equipment they need to continue on with their state sponsored terror uh from from these from Russia and China that's i mean i i that's a horrific scenario um so well let me let me throw this out there guys here yeah. it may be a small item to some people but I think it lays out what I said. This is a this is a traitorous individual. He is pro Muslim. He is anti Christian. He is anti Jew. Mm-hmm. Um, not long ago, we had uh, Bo Bergdahl, who was a deserter, likely a traitor in his own right, uh, was traded for five high level uh, individuals in the uh, in the prison over there in the in the Cuba area. The um, uh, tell me what the, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, we had five high-level uh, terrorist leaders Gitmo. that were released from Gitmo for a yeah. deserter. And Barack Obama yeah. said, "Oh, we move heaven and earth to try to you know gain the freedom for Americans." Okay, I mean that was a bad deal, I think, in anybody's book, but that's what he said. We've got three Americans locked up in Iranian prisons right now, and one of them, the 39-year-old uh, resident. That was uh, what he was doing. Was he was working for um, uh, for Christian? He was he was working with the Christians. He was meeting with the Christians over there. They caught him. They sentenced him to eight years in prison. There's two others uh, that have been accused of spying. Uh, whether they were or not, I don't know. But there's three good Americans that are sitting cool on their heels in probably a hellhole over in Iran, which would right. probably make Gitmo look like a, uh, a Rich Carlton by comparison. And yeah. there's there wasn't any attempt in this negotiation. It should have been a throwaway for Iran to throw them in there because they wanted the deal so bad. And right. we've, we've still got three Americans sitting there cooling their heels in these hell holes of Iranian jails. Uh, and, and this administration didn't seem to be too concerned about them. But Bo Bergdahl and his parents... You know, a guy that comes in and speaks Muslim in the Rose Garden, uh, right. we're, we're highest priority. I think that tells you just that one item yep. where this guy is coming from. And one of them is locked up because he was an active Christian over in Iran. Right. All right, it's, Shane, hang on for just a second sure. and we'll take our first break. And when we'll come back, we'll continue this conversation. And then later on, uh, more presidential candidates. Uh, in the ring now, and a lot of them, nine or more, are going to be here in central Iowa this Saturday for the Family Leader Summit. Uh, tickets are free. You just have to go to thefamilyleader.com and uh, print up your ticket. We, as in 99.3 The Truth, will be broadcasting live from the Family Leader Summit all day Saturday. So if for some reason you can't uh, make it yourself, uh, for heaven's sakes, uh, take along your uh, smartphone and tune in our app of the Truth Network, and you can hear it all right there from KTIA, Iowa.
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Hi, I'm Jay Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John, Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, 21 minutes after 2, we'll date this show. It's the 14th day of July in the Lord's year 2015. I am J. Michael McCoy, and this is Max World Live here on 99.3 KTIA. If you are a newfound listener, welcome. The station's only been on the air for about four weeks. This is what we call a preaching, teaching, and social commentary station. Now, how you want to unpack that any way you want Basically, every day from 11 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening, and then up until, again until uh, 11 o'clock, we do social commentary. Steve Dace, myself, Dr. Brown, uh, uh, Jay Seklow, um, some really good, talented people, some direct Bible teaching, uh, some social commentary like this uh, show is today. Uh, and then the rest of the time, we have some of the best, the best national preachers uh, on the radio. Check our schedule out at thetruthnetwork.com. Uh, just say you want to see what's in Iowa, and it'll tell you. Now, I said a minute ago about if you want to listen to any of the live broadcasts on your smartphone, it's thetruthnetwork.com. It's the Truth Network app. It's free. And then when you go to it, it'll take you to one of our communities, Winston-Salem, uh, Salt Lake City, wherever we happen to be. Just click on Iowa, and uh, you'll get it free of charge. Uh, not a lot of radio stations are able to do that nowadays with videos and pictures, but we can do that, and we're thankful to have you as one of our listeners. All right, if today it's because Frank's running the sound, and so it might get a little choppy. Might some things might fall out, so just give give him some time. The boy's trying to learn a skill. 
<laughs> the only skill he's ever had is opening his mouth <laughs> and having sound come out. So we're trying to teach the boys some more skills. And, of course, the, the video will be great today because Ryan's doing the video. I, I don't – do you think I should let Frank play with cameras? <laughs> I, don't I mean, that's know. kind of, you know, Smokey the Bear is over my shoulder saying, don't play with fire. Don't let him play with fire. I'm just not sure. Tom Coates is my co-host, and we were talking about broadcasting live from the Family Leaders Summit. Who are the uh, scheduled yeah. guests? Let's, let's touch on that. You mentioned nine. I think they now actually have ten confirmed presidential candidates. Uh, ben Carson, uh, Cruz, they've got Lindsey Graham, uh, Huckabee. Uh, Bobby Jindal, uh, Governors Rick Perry, uh, Marco Rubio, Rick Santorum, and the guy that's in making all the headlines right now with his uh, comments, Donald Trump, and the most recently announced one, Scott Walker. Now, in addition to that, they've got some other speakers, Tony Perkins and Gary Bauer. By the way, Mac, I get a uh, end-of-day report from Gary Bauer. Yeah. Yeah. I've sent a few of those over to you. That's free of charge, and I think it's it's usually about two pages, and it is well worth the yeah. read. Anybody that's listening to this uh, that knows Gary Bauer knows what a sharp guy he is, strong Christian man, end-of-day report, uh, no cost. You get an email sent to you. I, that's that's a blessing. Yeah, I get so, it every day. I enjoy do it. Do you? Okay, good. Yeah, well, I get it because you send it to me. Well, I don't send it every day. I've sent a few times where I think it's particularly pertinent commentary, something that that you would be interested in or we've discussed on the air. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Mac, if you don't get it every day, you ought to. Just sign up for it. Just GaryBauer.com? Yeah, just, yeah, go to Gary Bauer, the end-of-day report, sign up for it, and it'll start coming to you every day. All right, on the phone with us is our special guest, Shane Vanderhart from Caffeinated Thoughts, his radio program here on 99.3 every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock and then repeat it again at 6 o'clock that evening. Plus, you've got uh, caffeinatedthoughts.com, uh, a blog in which uh, Shane and some other very uh, talented and uh, well-spoken people get on there and tell us what's going on on the right or the left or any place in between. What's impacting your life today? Uh, we're talking for a little bit longer about this uh, treaty that came down, and I just, I just feel like we just keep getting bamboozled. I, I don't know what other word to use. It's just a dark day. It's it's it's. I know the sun is shining brightly. It's it, you know it, it's a sunny summer day, but it feels like a dark day to me. And uh, maybe I'm prejudiced because I haven't gotten as much sleep as I'd like the last few days. But uh, it feels like a very dark day to me, and I think it's. Uh, uh, impending doom. I know when, when Bush was in there, there was discussion that they would take decisive action and deal with this situation. You know, who was going to be the one to stop them? And Dick Cheney said in a subsequent interview that he had voted and argued for, you know, preemptive action on Iran because it was clear they were cheating, they were moving for the nuclear bomb. The problem with it, once they get it, they're kind of then like North Korea guys. You know, what are you going to do once they get the bomb? Because you don't right. d dare do anything because any kind of action could set off a, a, a reaction and they could release this thing. So once they get it, it's too late properly, I think, to deal with it. Uh, and another thing, Shane, there's all sorts of, of codicils in this thing, but there uh -huh. is going to be a major power overseeing their development of these, um, uh, the nuclear uh, turbines that, uh, uh, in fact, they're going to get the next generation. And they're going to be overseeing it because up until now, the uh, Israelis with the Mossad and some of the other people have been able to get in and, and commit some deviltry for them and mess up some of their development. And an oversight by a world superpower, presumably that'll be Russia, who has uh, now got a, a new moneyed client, by the way, guys, these sanctions that are going to be instantly lifted once United Nations signs off on them, I have heard through other channels that they have like 30 tankers sitting out in various ports all over the world. There's 50 million barrels of crude oil on those tankers waiting to come into port into the refineries. They're going to instantly grab a hold of billions of dollars that's been kept from them and many more dollars in oil that's already been pumped, 
could not because the sanction been properly sold. It's going to instantly, it's not going to take a little while. It will instantly hit the markets and probably drive down the price of crude oil, which is another thing uh, Saudi and some of the other Mideastern countries will not like. It's the glut of additional crude oil from Iran. Now, we could argue whether that's a good or a bad thing, but uh, there's a lot of consequences of this. And Iran is going out on the airwaves today, guys, calling this a victory. They're mm. saying through our, our, our persistence, our, our, our courage, our, our determination, we've got a great victory. Not that this is a thing for world peace or we've got a new trading partner or any of those stuff. This is an Iranian victory, analogous to a military victory. That's how they're celebrating it over there right now on the airwaves. Uh, Shane Vanderhart here from Caffeinated Thoughts. Shane, your thoughts. Well, I'm just uh, kind of skimming through this this deal, and it, it's just mind boggling um, to see basically some of the things that are going to be lifted, even by, for instance, the EU. Uh, for instance, transfers of funds between EU persons and entities, including financial institutions and Iranian person entities, including financial institutions, be allowed banking activities, provision of insurance or reassurance, and on and on. And they keep on talking about this as an agreement in good faith, and I, just just you know, reading that it's like doesn't having a good faith agreement require that all parties are actually approaching the, the agreement in good faith? I haven't seen any evidence that Iran is actually doing that. Um, this is again, it's mind-boggling. I hope Congress can put a stop to it and have bipartisan veto proof because uh, actually, this is a this deal should be something that you know, needs to be ratified by Congress. Uh, Obama shouldn't be able to just unilaterally make this deal on his own. Um, so, you know, let's hopefully get it, we can we can get it stopped. I don't um, think we can, Shane, and I don't understand the details either. One of us is going to have to find this out. But I understand even the Corker proposal is not going to be good enough that this guy, again, has is is imposed his imperial powers to put something over on us, and if they try to do something, he's threatened to veto. Now, how... Can you do an agreement well, like this and threaten a veto on Congress if they try to amend or stop this in any way? Well, here's the thing. I mean, treaties are supposed to be. You know, I, I guess if they're somehow going to use some legal limbo and not consider this to be a treaty, I don't see how you can't consider this to be a treaty. Um, so Senate That would be ratified by the Senate, by the Senate yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So constitutionally, it should have to be approved by by the Senate. So I, I just, I don't get, I, I you know, how the, the administration thinks this could move forward without congressional consent. I could see this going to court if, if, he, can, if he tries to implement this without congressional approval. Well, and how um, long would that take, though, Shane, in a, in a national or international court? And in the meantime, the sanctions are going to be lifted. Uh, they're going to well, they're going to move ahead, uh, and they're going to say, "Well, you've already agreed to the we've we've lifted the uh, weapons. We're shipping weapons from Russia and China over to uh, to Iran, and and then now they're going to have money to pay for it. They're going to be a a cash yeah. customer." It's it's <laughs> Obama's put us between a rock and a hard place, really, because I mean we can control Congress can control what the U.S. does, but we can't control what Russia, China, the EU, UN does. So. I would hope at the very least Congress can force, even if it's in court, you know, for the court to place a stay on on this deal, at least the U.S. end of it, uh, until they go through the process. But, I mean, you're right, kind of the horse has already been let out of the barn. Shane. Uh, while we slam the door shut. Uh, Shane Vanderhart here from Caffeinated Thoughts. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Tom Coates is here. Have you heard my prophecy, my prediction my thoughts on what Barack Hussein Obama's next job will be? I think you said general secretary of the U.N. Yeah. He's going to take over the U.N. He's going to have all these countries, because now, now Iran, now they've gotten close with the U.N. Israel's not close with the U.N. Palestine is. The U.N. is going to flip from what you and I, well, we didn't watch it become, but, you, you know, Tom, you're old mm -hmm. enough. You watched it become. Um, after World War II, all the uh, nations who had fought in World War II to kind of have this overall peace treaty. Now it's going to rise again, and, and I, I don't mean to sound weird or freaky, but I'm just telling you, what, what's Barack Obama's next job? It's got to be to head the U.N. 
He can't go to another country and be a leader. I mean, I suppose he could, but right. I can't I was, imagine. I, I, I was praying he would just, you know, go into retirement and <laughs> no. go quietly in the night. But I, no, no. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody would try appointing him as general secretary. That would shock me at all. Well, no. Why wouldn't that be Hillary Clinton? Well, uh, uh, what we're going to see also is he's not going to retire, Shane. I, I wish right. I wish he would go away, but in the very least, whether Max's prediction is right or not, I wouldn't don- deny that he would he would shoot for that. He's going to stay out there in Washington, D.C., in New York City. He's going to continue to get a platform anytime he wants it from the minions in the liberal media. Um, you know, the, anytime that something happens that's going to try to unravel or undo anything he has done— or something that he doesn't like, he's going to demand that platform. So whether he has the U.N. or or not, he is not going to go away. We've had other presidents. Bush is a gentleman. Um, yeah. Even even Clinton and Carter have not been, you know, seen and heard a lot since they left. Um, Reagan, I mean, he was he was happy to go ride his horses and stay out on the ranch and stay out of things. Um, this is not the same kind of guy. Even as bad as right. Carter and Clinton were in many yeah. regards. You know who's behind his power grab? It's Carter, because now Carter is not the worst yeah, Democratic president that. ever in the yeah, history heard, of the world. Heard that, yeah. This is this is a different cat. This is a different kind of guy. And everything right. from destroying race relations in this country to uh, killing us when it comes to uh, uh, social issues. That we even talked about the gay marriage, uh, that it's going to be persecution of Christians, or the destruction of our interest over in the Mideast, and elsewhere, it's there. There's n- never going to be a president that has had as much impact in a, such a short period of time. I don't think. Jill King from King's Christian Bookstore says she believes he's going to find a way to get a third term. Somehow, he'll find a way to get a third term. Shane, you hang on. Uh, yep. We'll talk about the presidential candidates and the upcoming family leader summit, which you'll be at, I'll be at, Tom will be at, uh, Frank will be at. We'll all be there. Will you be there? It's free. Go to thefamilyleader.com and print up your free ticket today. Live from the truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Fixed rate is free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. (laughs) We have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you can just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a 
very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. We promise you something, that's what you're going to get no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call, we're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, welcome. It's uh, 22 minutes before the top of the hour. At the top of the hour, it will be Salem Radio Network News updating us on this treaty and other news from around the world. And then at 303, the Steve Dace. Back live in the market and afternoon drive where he belongs, only here on The Truth, 99.3. Tom Coates in the house today from Axworld. Uh, Ryan is producing and Frank is learning uh, the soundboard today. He wanted to try to figure out how this magic happens behind the scenes. And so if there seems to be, and, and then it cuts a little out because my goes away, it's just Frank messing with the sound. All right, uh, we've got Shane Vanderhart on the uh, phone today from Caffeinated Thoughts. That's a blog you can check out, caffeinatedthoughts.com. It should be one of those (laughs) blogs that you just cover from time to time. Frank Frank tried to say something, and he didn't have it mastered well enough to get himself up on the air. (laughs) He doesn't have a microphone. He's got a microphone, but he wasn't live. (laughs) And learning is the key. (laughs) Ah, There's the voice. There he is, the verse. Frank will be here tomorrow helping us with the audio because my special guest tomorrow is Pastor Michael Mudloff, and he's now the second person who refuses to be on the radio with Frank. So Frank will have to be in his his production room. I figure if I had this way, if I could get everybody to say that, then Frank could just run sound and we'd never have to hear his voice. All right, Shane Vanderhart is here. Uh, that's a blog you ought to just put on your favorites. Check it out every once in a while. It's reasonably written. It's, uh, it's sane. It's uh, uh, not a guy who thinks he's got to do it in 2,544 words. It's short to the point, and Shane has an excellent sense of humor, uh, rather dry, which I appreciate. And uh, he also has a radio show here on 99.3 every Saturday morning at 8 and every Saturday afternoon at 6 o'clock. Now, I think everybody here in this room and in this studio will be at the uh, Family Leader Summit uh, coming up this Saturday, broadcasting live. Shane, you're bringing uh, Brian Myers and uh, some other people with you. I know Tamara Scott's coming in. Uh, Mm -hmm. Tom, you'll be here. Uh, Bob Montserrat will be there. Um, I believe uh, Michael Damastis and some other people will be there and, and on the air with us. What do you expect uh, this Family Leader Summit to, uh, to look like, to sound like? What's going to be the energy that we're going to get off of this as we move into Saturday evening and shut it down and then wake up Sunday morning for church? It's going to be interesting because, uh, especially in, in light of there not being a straw poll now, this is kind of the big thing this summer. Uh, before the straw poll kind of, you know, took all the the attention away from everything else, even though I guess this would be the first year the Family Leadership Summit would have existed along with the straw poll. They weren't around, they weren't doing this uh, last time we had a straw poll. So I, I think, um, generally speaking, they've they've always had right around you know between a thousand and twelve hundred people uh, attend this event. Uh, you're going to have a lot of social conservatives coming to hear what these candidates have to say. Um, I'm just, I'm always intrigued by those who choose not to come to an event like this because it's a way for uh, them to, to get involved in, or to, excuse me, a presidential candidate to have exposure with, with a lot of the grassroots. Um, so, and there's a lot of uh, media that's going to be there. So just, it's kind of mind boggling to me when a candidate kind of passes us by well, isn't isn't so, Jeb and Jeb's completely passing by Iowa, right? It seems that way. I mean, he's com- he's he's coming out a few times here and there, but not as much as someone that you'd expect. That's you know, hey, I've got winning Iowa as part of, as part of my game plan. Um, so, you know, it's no surprise to me that he's passing um, passing up the family leadership summit. He was going to be at the straw poll, and he's only come out. Well, he had one swing through the state right after he announced and that's been the last time he's been out. Wasn't he out uh, wasn't he in Ames recently? Um didn't I see oh, it, didn't I see sorry, him being quoted 
from Ames on some commentary he was making, fighting back, sh- shooting back at Hillary. Now, I think oh, it's interesting, I, Shane, that yeah. that Ames is a spot for the family leader and their summit, which was right. the prior location for the straw polls. It, it looks to me like they, they've, you know, it's probably a pretty smart move to uh, look like they're they're moving into the void that's created by the lack of the straw poll. I think it's a massful move, and I wouldn't be surprised to see many more people attending this year than might, might have otherwise. What do you think? I, I think, yeah, I think they're going to definitely have a larger attendance. And I stand corrected on Bush. I thought that was coming up. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's going to be interesting. Uh, there are some of us that kind of, you know, have been watching this uh, this kind of exchange between because uh, the Iowa, Iowa GOP leadership, the family leadership summit, didn't always, I think, see eye to eye, um, and we, we kind of thought, hmm, I wonder if there's the, there's this, this healthy tension in between the two, and maybe even some competition, um, because you know the Iowa GOP would do a fundraiser, and family leadership would do one, say, hey, and we had more, and we raised this much money, and and uh, so uh, in some ways, I, I thought maybe this was. When they first started this, I thought they were going to try to compete with the straw poll. However, then they moved it to a different um, month when the the straw poll um, date was announced. So, but, uh, but I think I think they're trying to get along better with the party. Uh, but it's it's interesting with the straw poll being uh, gone. I, I agree with you that. You know, we're going to see a lot more people there. Well, there's some bad blood between uh, Bob Vanderplatz and uh, and the establishment uh, Republicans. Uh, uh, he muddied the water for Branstead when he first got elected at the uh, the convention, uh, and I don't imagine that they've kissed and made up. So you're right. I think there is some of that. I want to get your opinion, Shane. Uh, the one guy that's making a lot of headlines right now is Donald Trump. We've right. talked about him. He's coming to this uh, to this event, um, and apparently very enthusiastic about it. He's getting a lot of media coverage. I want to get your opinion. Mac and I voiced ours. I said I'm worried that he's going to be the next next H. Ross Perot. This last right. week, he refused to rule out a third party run uh, if he right. doesn't get the Republican nomination, and I do think that's the biggest danger. Mac. Uh, denied it last week. Doesn't think that he would he I would do that. I don't um, think Trump would ever do that. All right. Uh, I want to, but I I do know that he's given over three hundred thousand dollars to Democratic candidates. A lot of that to the Hill to Hillary, Bill, their yeah. foundation. Uh, right. Some of his actions in the past would indicate otherwise. I want to get your take on it, though. He's an interesting character, and I don't think he should be taken lightly by any of the Republican candidates. And my can- concern. What I've seen of late with with the interplay between uh, like Rick Perry and Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio and um, is that it seems like the the focus has been on Trump's immigration comments and and I guess if I were a candidate, uh, Mike Huckabee actually had a pretty good approach. He said, you know what, I'm I'm not going to weigh in on this because. I want to talk about my immigration plan, not about what you know Donald Trump has to say. And my fear is, you know, talking, looking at a third party run, is that with the GOP coming down hard on Trump, um, because and I wish people would step back and say, it, these were inartful comments. Um, they were blunt comments. But hello, it's Donald Trump. This is that, that's that's what he does. Um, there, there is a little bit of truth to that. Yeah, you are getting some bad actors coming across the border. I don't think anybody should deny that. I think high you know, percentage of the crimes, uh, Shane. High percentage. Yeah. He's right. Uh, high percentage right. of kidnaps, rapes, murders are uh, are done by this three and a half to four percent of our population. Twelve right. to anywhere from twenty percent of these crimes are being committed by illegal aliens. So he right. has a point. Yeah. He has a point, and Rasmussen just released a poll last week that said 53 percent of Americans agree with Trump on, on this issue. So I think what the GOP needs to do is they need to communicate a vision for immigration and, and border security and immigration reform um, without necessarily—I don't think—I I, just—I I wish candidates would stop playing into the media. You don't have to respond to everything every single other candidate says. Um, and, and when you have suddenly this establishment pile on and this candidate pile on Trump, 
I think it emboldens him to run for a third party if he doesn't get mm. for, for as a third party if he doesn't win the GOP nomination. That is, that is my fear, and I voiced that weeks yeah. ago when we had Sam Clovis on here. All right, we're going to take our last break. Uh, when we come back, thoughts on uh, Donald Trump and more. What do you think? 244-0077. That's the number you call. It's your voice. I want to hear in Max World. 515-244-0077. Here live on The Truth. Yep, The Truth. 99.3. Powered by WebcastOneLive.com. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John, From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, good afternoon. Ten minutes for the top of the hour, 14th day of July. Uh, tomorrow, Pastor Michael Mudloff from West Kirk Presbyterian Church, and I'm going to, I'm going to debate with him. Frank's not invited. <laughs> Single predestination. You know what that is? Well, you're not going to like it if you're a Calvinist or a Presbyterian. But as a Lutheran, single predestination. That'll be tomorrow. I have a new quote for our president, Tom. Good. Give it to us, Mac. Uh, Barack Obama has lowered the standards of the presidency quicker than I can lower them. I don't think you missed, you missed a word in there. Um, violated my standards. Yes. Well, the, the original quote comes from, I violated my standards quicker than I can lower them. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But, you know, we were talking beforehand, and, and Frank, you get in here because you want to say something, and Shane's on the phone. We're talking about, you know, you said Donald Trump had been married three times and four bankruptcies and really below the office of the president. I agree. But hasn't Barack Obama lowered, and I'm serious about this, hasn't he lowered the standards of what it takes? In, in more he's, meaningful he's a hardly ways. elected community activist in which more, a peppered background and wouldn't give us his his background records so we don't know what he got in college we don't know where he traveled uh his associations uh even even his parentage is is in question he had a uh, a young uh trollop for a mother that posed uh, for nude pictures at an at an early age with a guy that might very well be his father uh it doesn't matter the, the more important things, not only did he come with extremely dark and questionable background, but what he's done once he's gotten in yeah, there. Yeah, and yeah. That's the that's thing. Yeah. Hey, Shane, this is The Verse. Uh, I'm hey. glad to hear that you uh, take uh, Donald Trump seriously. I mean, he's got $9, $9 billion in the can. He's preaching a very populist uh, you know, message. 
of mm-hmm. jobs, trade imbalance, infrastructure, rebuilding, and immigration. And I think it would be to the Democrats' detriment to uh, blow him off and not make friends with him at minimum. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't see them doing that, though, just because that would turn off their base. Um, just because of, mainly because of his comments on immigration, I just really don't see it happening publicly anyway. Yeah, are you talking about him actually being able to get the nomination? No, he's, uh, Frank was talking about uh, whether Democrats could reach out to him and play nice, and I, I just don't see that happening. Well, I don't know either, but that Frank mentions an interesting point. Uh, he lays claim to about $8.6 billion. Uh, mm-hmm. Forbes has him about half that, about $4.3 billion. Now, I mean, a billion here, a billion there, who really cares? But if he stays in this race very long, he's going to have to make some disclosures, some factual disclosures on his finances that right. could be rather interesting. Whether he's right, Forbes right, uh, it'll be interesting because, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's that's quite a discrepancy. We'll see who's who's more on target here. Right. That, that'll be interesting. And, and you know, as far as Republicans taking them seriously, uh, just for instance, just in Iowa, I know in Madison County, he had like 280 people on his event. His first event after uh, announcing over 1,000 people at the Hoyt Sherman Place. Over 400 people went to see him at Mason City. And this, he's resonating almost, uh, I want to say it was 11,000 down in Phoenix um, that went to see him Is that right? discuss immigration. Yeah. Well, and he had Joe Arpaio, which we, Mac, years ago, we had Joe Arpaio on yep. the show. Yep. And Joe said that, uh, I think it was like, there was a big percentage, and I don't, I won't quote the percentage. I could be wrong, but a big percentage of the ones that he releases uh, to um, uh, to the enforcement people uh, end up back in his jails, and so he's getting right. tired of that being a revolving door too. Yeah, I, which I could totally understand. Um, so as far as you know, Trump's concerned, he, he's he's nationally recognized. Of course, he also. Uh, polling I've seen has one of the highest unlikable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Too. So <laughs> it's like either you like him or you hate him. Um, me, I'm kind of intrigued by him. Uh, just uh, he, He's entertaining. I, I'm looking forward to the debate with him then. But, I mean, when you got a guy who can just totally self-fund his campaign and he can just keep going, keep going, keep going, and going as a third party if he wants, mm. it, it's, uh, yeah. Um, he's scary, uh, isn't he? I mean, he and, he's really scary. I mean, he's and, got he's got to scare the bejeebers out of the people in the Republican Party at this point because they say this is our election to have, and then we could control the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And there's one guy because I I don't think Hillary Clinton can beat whichever one we put up there, but I do think that Donald Trump has the ability to become H. Ross Perot of 2016. Right. Can and, Hillary beat Donald Trump? Probably not. I don't think Hillary can beat anybody of consequence, but Donald Trump, as a spoiler, as H. Ross Pro, I don't think there's any question. Uh, Pappy Bush would have had his second term against a little-known Southern governor named Bill Clinton had H. Ross Pro not stepped in there and taken 19 percent of the vote. Yeah, right, right, and yeah, definitely Trump has the ability to steal that many votes away, especially if um, the Republican Party puts up puts forth a moderate. Uh, Because you're going to have conservatives stay home, or or they'll be tempted to vote third party. Yeah, and right now, even even regardless, we're going to there's still he still has the ability to pull that many votes away. Hey, Tom, don't you think it's uh, it's at least a change of pace that Trump is is changing the rules up, and he's not playing by the rules that uh, the Democrats and Republicans normally play by. I do. I do. And and we've seen some people come in and kind of do this, but we've never seen a person of a national scope, uh, nationally uh, top rated uh, TV show, The Apprentice for years, knows how to play the media and comes in. I mean, H. Ross Pro was an interesting character and got 19 percent of the vote, but he did not have the national stage and presence that a Donald Trump's. So, I yes, know, I agree but with he that. He had them charts and he had that pointer <laughs> stick and he could tell you just how much you were going to lose if he didn't get elected. <laughs> so I think you're right, Frank. He's an, a unique individual in that regard. Calling him interesting, uh, H. Ross Perot, interesting is, is very much an understatement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember him. Very them kind. big ears. Listen to yeah. you, Pappy. I could do this for you. All right, Shane, we sure appreciate you uh, taking time today. You're welcome anytime on the radio. Rather see your face in person, but your voice is what I want to hear. So thanks for being here. You're very welcome.
welcome. Thanks for having me. You bet. And Frank, pretty good job. Not bad. You got to quit playing with your microphone, though. We can hear you when you're talking. You're wiggling your microphone. <laughs> Keep your hands off of it, okay? <laughs> if you can't do that, we'll put that back teen on it or something like you did when you were kids so you didn't chew your fingernails. All right, Ryan, thanks for making the video look good. Tom, thanks for being here. I'll see you uh, Saturday morning uh, at the uh, C.Y. Stevens Auditorium. Uh, uh, Tom's going to be there. And, you know, I, I really want to hear what you have to say there. I'm really not that concerned with what the presidential candidates have to say. They're going to walk up and give me seven minutes and it's going to be their narrative. And I'm not going to like any of them for doing it. I want to hear what you in the 22nd row, seat nine, thought when Cruz got up and spoke or Donald Trump got up and spoke, or one of these. It's your voice I want to hear, so stop by the booth and tell us what you're thinking, and we'll get you on the brand new 99.3 The Truth and uh, make you one of our tent makers. Uh, that's the people we call who support us because they're out there doing what they can to make sure this ministry continues forward. And whatever advertisements you hear on this broadcast, uh, I don't know if this is cool or not for a talk show host to say, please patronage our 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 sponsors because they're the ones that make this happen all right and so until tomorrow with michael mudloff uh you know what i'm gonna ask you to do yep forgive somebody because as you forgive you shall be forgiven i'll see you in church